This video is going to walk you through how you can protect your assets and how you can set up a trust. I'm a registered CPA and owner of a tax technology company, Taxel, and I've helped thousands of clients optimize their tax and financial strategy to save more and build a better financial future. Everyone always talks about how important it is to protect your assets, but there's simply not enough reliable information out there on how you can actually do it for yourself. So that's exactly what we're going to be covering in today's video. I'll be breaking down precisely how you can protect your assets and set up a trust. Now let's dive into it. So first off, what is asset protection? What is a trust? And so asset protection involves different legal strategies that safeguard your wealth from risks like lawsuits, creditors, taxes, different things like that. And the goal is to protect your assets for your future and your heirs. And so what is a trust? A trust is a legal arrangement where assets are managed by a trustee for the benefit of specific beneficiaries. So what we're going to be talking about today is specifically focusing on revocable living trust, but there's other options and other planning around asset protection out there. So let's talk about revocable living trust. Basically with a revocable living trust, you place your assets into a trust while you maintain control of those assets while you're alive. And then upon death, the trust is going to manage the asset distribution and avoid probate for your heirs. With an irrevocable trust, this removes the assets from your ownership. So the trust now owns it. You don't personally own it. And it's going to provide some stronger protection, but you're going to have less flexibility with those assets. Now, when we talk about asset protection, there's a lot of different strategies out there outside of just irrevocable trust. You might look at an LLC or a limited liability company. And we see this a lot with small business owners. And so basically, if you have a business operating under a limited liability company or a rental property, that can help shield whatever that activity is from personal lawsuits. So if you're properly having everything set up, you might have an LLC with a rental property in it. If that LLC were to get sued, that LLC protection can protect anything on that's not associated within that specific LLC. Now, there's other things like insurance uh, policies and retirement accounts. And these are different kind of vehicles that can protect your wealth or certain funds that you have against credit cards. Now, we can only cover how to protect your assets and create a trust in a short amount of detail because we still have other things that we need to cover. But if you want to start implementing this immediately, click the link in the description to start with Tax Elm and get unlimited access to our team of tax experts. So let's dive into the why. Why a revocable living trust? And, and the main reason is, is you're sitting here growing your wealth, growing your business, doing all these good things you're putting in all this time and effort into. And now we don't want to talk about death, but let's face it, everyone's going to die at some point in time. Some people, it might be a year from now. Some people might be 80 years from now. We don't know when that time's going to come, but we do know that death will happen. And we're spending all this time while we're alive, growing our wealth, growing our business, that we want to have a plan in place that all that effort, all that wealth we accumulated, we want to have a plan in place that passes that on to our heirs, to the people that we want all that work to go to. But we also want to be able to pass that on without a bunch of costs and legal battles and headaches and stress for those people that we're passing that wealth and those asset accumulation onto. And that's where a revocable living trust is so powerful. A revocable living trust helps avoid probate. It simplifies that distribution process, the distribution of those assets upon death. It maintains privacy during that distribution process, that whole ordeal. It ensures that your heirs receive your assets quickly and efficiently once you die. Again, without them having to go through all these different costs, without them having to go through headaches and legal battles and fights and all these other things, the revocable living trust makes that passing on of your assets smooth and easy. Now, without a revocable living trust, your estate may go through probate, a time-consuming, costly, public process. And, you know, if anyone's followed Prince, the, the music star, you know, you'll see that he did not have a trust set up and they're still fighting over things that happened 10 years ago as death, that they're still fighting over that process. So unprotected assets can also be more vulnerable to creditors, lawsuits, excessive taxes, all these different things upon death. And you don't want that to happen. Again, You've spent all this time building this wealth, accumulating this wealth, building your business, that when you die, you want to make it as effortless and some painless and easiest as possible for those people you're passing it on to. That's where revocable living trust comes into play. Now, everyone's situation is different, you know, based on your family makeup and how much money you have and how many assets you have and whether you're a business owner, you have real estate, all these different things. Everyone's situation is different. So there's no one fit all strategy. And, you know, beginners often assume that one strategy, like a trust, works for everyone. 
However, those different factors, you know, the size of your estate, how much is your estate, the goals that you have, the risks that you have in, while you're alive, uh, make there are certain strategies more effective than other for one person versus some other person. And so it's important to understand, okay, what options are out there, but then also to, to start to dive in and say, what makes sense for me? Because there's people out there that will try to sell different strategies and say, this is the one fit all, but it doesn't work for them or it doesn't make sense for them. Or they're spending money on this complex structure they set up when they don't really need that much based on what they have going on. Or they're being sold this very simple process when they need a lot more based on their estate. So it's important that we get you set up in the right situation. So how, how do we do this? How do we determine what is the right setup for you? And I would say the first step is to identify what assets you even have. We need to know what accumulation do you have? You know, what I always say is you should have a financial summary that you update annually that indicates the various assets that you have. So you, a financial summary, an Excel spreadsheet that said that you update annually, it says, okay, here are the checking and savings accounts we have. Here are the investment portfolios we have and the various different maybe brokerage companies that they are with. Here's crypto asset holdings that we have. Maybe you invest in syndications or real estate syndications and here's kind of where those investments are. Maybe you have real estate and here's all the real estate properties that you have or how many retirement accounts do you have and where are those housed and listing those out. If you have life insurance, you know, what are those policies? Where are they through? How much money are they? If you have a home, automobile, toys, think of four wheelers, different things like that, snowmobiles. Keep a record of what those are. If you have ownership in various businesses, whether you own 100% of it or 10% of it, have a record of that. And also keep a record of your loans. You know, who do you owe? At any point in time, you can pull up this financial summary and it'll say, here are all the assets that I have and here's the location of those assets and here's roughly how much is in them and here's are some of my debts and here are some of those things that we want to go through. And I say for each item you have, you should have on that financial summary, have the most recent value of that asset, kind of where is it located? So if it's a brokerage account, is it at Fidelity or where is it located? Maybe have some logins and where they can access that. This is going to make that process easier. And then you can put this document into your trust, into your trust documents when you have it. Not only is this going to be helpful for you, to kind of give you an idea of, hey, where are you at from a financial picture? With this, you have a full outline. Here are all the assets that we have. Here's everything that I own. Here's everything that I owe. And here's the businesses that I'm owned and the loans that I have and the life insurance policies I have. This is going to simplify these things and make it easier for you. And this is something that I do in my life personally. So have that financial summary. That's going to tell you what assets, what do you even own? What's important to know out there? And now that you have that, you can really kind of identify what assets you want to protect. You can start to assess risks and different tax implications and go from there where you can consult an attorney to determine what's the best strategy for you based on this asset makeup that you have. Because guess what? If your asset makeup is $100,000, there's going to be a strategy and a road or a path that you go down. If your financial summary makeup is $100 million, that path is likely going to look a little different. So let's find out where you're at from that accumulation point today. Let's update it regularly and let's, let's consult attorney for that. So steps to setting up a trust. Step one, consult an attorney, someone that specializes in this, that knows exactly how to identify what's going to be the right vehicle for you. Step two is you're going to need to identify the assets that you want to place within that trust. Step one, consult on attorney. Step two, identify the assets. Step three is you're going to have to name some beneficiaries. These are going to be, be the people that inherit those assets. And there could be multiple beneficiaries. It could be kids. It could be grandkids. It could be nieces. It could be nephews. It could even be a church or some type of nonprofit that you want to support with these assets. Step four is you're going to appoint a trustee. And that trustee is going to be that trusted person that's going to manage the distribution of those assets upon death. That's going to be something that you trust. Could be a family member, could be an attorney, could be an accountant, could be someone that you trust that's going to take care of distributing those assets upon your death to whoever that might be. And then step five is to actually draft the trust document. So you're going to work with an estate planning attorney to draft a legally binding trust document. And those are the steps. So step one, consult an attorney. Step two, identify what assets you're going to place in the trust. Step three is going to name the beneficiaries. Decide who's going to inherit those assets. Step four is going to appoint an, a trustee who's going to kind of manage that trust upon your death. And step five is to actually draft the trust document. And if your goal is to have an easy transfer of wealth, a revocable living trust is going to be ideal because it allows flexibility during your lifetime, but avoids probate after death. 
If you're looking for more robust protection from creditors, you know, you might be looking at an irrevocable trust. These can be complex and don't really come into play oftentimes until you have significant wealth accumulation. So make sure you're not just getting sent down and, and pushed into a specific trust just for the person that's selling it for you to make some money. Make sure it makes sense for your situation. And truly, an experienced estate planning attorney will help you decide which plan is right for you. They're going to help you decide that. Then they're going to help you draft, review, and sign the trust documents. And then they're also going to assist with transferring those assets into the trust because that's the final step. Once we've done all this work, we've gotten all this, this, this trust set up. Now we have to actually fund the trust. We have to put our assets into the trust because if we don't put the assets in there, we can have this document that says all those things. But if that document, nothing gets put into that trust and then you die, well, there's nothing into the trust. So if you have a home over here that was never put into the trust, well, guess what? It's not in the trust. So it doesn't file the trust documents. You're still going to probate. So that's the final key piece to all this is to transfer your assets. That's what completes this whole circle. Do all the work to get set up, but don't stop there. Make sure you do the physical transferring of those assets into that trust. Now that you know how to protect your assets and build a trust, I want you to understand this video applies to the masses. It's general advice that helps everyone. If you want unique advice directly applicable to you and your business, click the link in the description and check out Taxome.